Hi there, this is a brief video explanation about the colony of Jamestown, the first successful English settlement in North America. So the Roanoke colony, which we just talked about, was unsuccessful for a lot of reasons, and we don't really know exactly what happened to those colonists. But uh, shortly thereafter, a new group decided to attempt to settle in North America once again. And this time we have an organization called the Virginia Company. It was originally formed in 1606 in England with the purpose of settling in the New World. So the hope was that people would invest in this company. They would send a crew over. This colony would settle, become successful, find gold, and uh, improve the wealth of everyone involved, both, both those settlers and the investors in the Virginia Company back home in England. One problem, though, was that the colonists themselves were incentivized to search for gold rather than building a permanent, stable, safe colony. And so they ran into a lot of troubles right off the bat. Looking at a map, we can see here in North Carolina, what will become North Carolina is the location of Roanoke Island and the colony that was unsuccessful there. This Virginia company was moving farther north up the coast, closer to the Chesapeake Bay, and that's where we'll find the Jamestown colony. So when those colonists first arrived, they ran into a lot of problems. So their struggles at first, um, partly due to the location itself. So the site of this colony was really swampy. There are a lot of mosquitoes. As we know, mosquitoes can carry diseases like malaria. Uh, the water wasn't always safe to drink, and throughout history, unsafe drinking water has caused a lot of disease and death, um, not just in Jamestown, but across the world. And so here it was really no different. The climate was pretty difficult. If you've been to Virginia or along the Atlantic coast in the summertime, it can be very hot and humid. The winters were also pretty tough. And so the early years of this settlement at Jamestown, they were struck with some bad winters, which made things even more challenging. Plus, as we mentioned already, the colonists were really interested in finding gold. And so sometimes they prioritize looking for gold over some of the uh, things that might have kept them safe and helped them to survive. So of the 104 that initially made this trip to Jamestown in uh, the early 1600s, only 38 of them survived to the next year. So 1607, they come to Jamestown, they experience all of these hardships, all of these difficulties, and oh, many of them died. So two-thirds of them did not survive that first year until this man here decided to take over and make some changes. So John Smith took over the Jamestown colony in January of 1608 and started to make some significant changes. One of the first things he did was make some improvements around the colony itself by building a protective wall to keep them safe from intruders and others in the area that might not take too kindly to these settlers claiming land. He also instituted a new mandatory work requirement. So he's famous for the phrase, he that will not work shall not eat, meaning if you are going to be a part of this Jamestown settlement, you need to contribute. And you will not have the benefit of things like food if you're not going to contribute to helping the colony survive. He also worked hard to improve some of the relations with the Powhatan tribe that was nearby. Um, so if you know anything about the story of Pocahontas, um, that's where some of those relations and some of those uh, connections with local tribes significantly helped the colonists in Jamestown. And as we will see again later, um, the English settlers in North America would not have survived in many cases without the help of the local tribes. So by 1609, the colony was increasing in success and 500 additional settlers arrived uh, to make the Jamestown settlement work. So a brief overview, kind of a timeline here of Jamestown's early history. In 1606, King James I of England gave this Virginia company the right to settle land north of Roanoke, again with the hope of finding gold and increasing the wealth of the investors and the settlers themselves. 
In 1607, 104 men arrived in Virginia uh, with their leader, John Smith, who was ultimately going to make the place um, successful. 1609, so two years later, Smith returned to England, and we have this period of the starving time where there's horrendous stories of what the colonists resorted to eating in order to try and survive. Um, by 1612, the colony really started to take off after a man named John Rolfe started growing tobacco. So the decision to plant that crop, um, ultimately that's what made the Virginia Company and the Jamestown Colony a financial success. So they had the money that they needed um, to, uh, to make their colony a success. And then in 1619, it had grown to the point that they could form their own representative government. And it's interesting and noteworthy that this is the first um, representative government created in the New World. Um, it's the house called the House of Burgesses, and it was created in order to make laws for the colony. So um, the members of the Janestown colony, they would elect these leaders to this House of Burgesses that would make laws for the colony to be governed. So in a nutshell, that's some of the key highlights for the early years of the Jamestown colony. Hope this helps. Thanks so much for watching.